Now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome everyone to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this Wednesday, June 4th, 2025. And starting with some of the weather related headlines across Alaska, we still have areas of rain, breezy conditions along the Gulf Coast, up into south central areas of the mainland, and eventually spreading into the Panhandle tonight and Thursday. And then we're watching farther north as this moisture lifts further north and encounters colder air along the Brooks Range. Uh, there is the potential for moderate to heavy wet accumulating snow, especially as we get it through the day Thursday, uh, Friday morning, uh, Friday night. And that would include areas along the Dalton Highway, especially there, Attigan Pass uh, could pick up several inches of snow in that time frame, as well as some other uh, higher terrain uh, across areas of the uh, uh, central and uh, northern part of the central interior. And yet, we have coming up this weekend a gale force low with more rain along the Gulf Coast uh, that will also try to spread a bit up into south central, but especially again into the panhandle. And this unsettled, cool, and occasionally wet pattern will continue at least into next week, though there might be a hint, maybe. I'll talk about that coming up at the end here of a little bit of a pattern shift towards something a little more uh, normal or slightly warmer and a little drier. Hopefully that's a beginning of a trend on the horizon toward mid-month. In the meantime, Anatovic Pass up there in the Brooks Range, lowering clouds 32 degrees. There's some light snow up that way. That snow will tend to pick up in intensity as we go uh, through later tonight, especially Thursday and uh, first half of Friday. Whittier has had wind and rain the past couple of days and still some rain and fog 44. Area of low pressure that's currently between Kodiak Island and just off the Kenai Coast, that feature is going to lift northward and weaken over uh, Prince William Sound as we go through the day on Thursday. And then Sheet Mountain, this is a nice shot here, the Matanuskik Valley, the glacier there, mostly cloudy, 45 degrees, a few dramatic uh, breaks in the cloud, allowing some of that sunlight through. Yakutats receiving some of that rain, low clouds and fog, 47 this mid-afternoon. It's part of the same frontal system affecting Whittier, and that uh, moisture is heading eastward. It'll be pushing into the panhandle from north to south as we go through uh, tonight and during the day on Thursday. So the only notable uh, advisories, watches, warnings, or special weather statements we have out right now for the as of mid-afternoon Wednesday as we still have the winter storm watch for the latter half of Thursday into Friday late evening for this area of the Brooks Range including Anatovic and Attigan passes that area of the Dalton Highway passing through the Brooks Range could see as much as five to ten inches of wet snow through late Friday evening. Now this area on the south slopes of the Brooks Range including places like Arctic Village, uh, Coldfoot, you have Gobbler's Knob northwest of Fairbanks along the Dalton. So this higher terrain, uh, the Ray and the White Mountains, including Eagle Summit and the Steese Highway. These areas could actually see some wet snow uh, and colder temperatures here through the weekend uh, in those higher uh, in the higher terrain. We're not expecting as much snow as what they'll get here in the East Central Brooks Range, but. Uh, if you're in these regions, uh, just uh, be aware of the fact that it'll be cold rain that could be mixed at times or even go over to a period of wet snow, especially in the higher terrain. So anyone planning to do outdoor recreating in this region, uh, be uh, wary in the sense that you have to have the uh, proper gear clothing because uh, this is very hypothermic uh, kind of weather if you're going to be out there trying to be self-sufficient uh, in the backcountry. And looking at the river breakup, we're still waiting on the northern rivers here of the north slope. Uh, the Colville River and the uh, Sag River have yet to break up, and given the persistent cold temperatures up that way, that's going to be a slow process. And we have some more moisture crossing up through the interior, so that has knocked down the fire danger considerably. We have a few areas on the north slopes uh, of the Alaska Range, uh, lower middle Tanana Valley, where there's still some pockets of a high to very high fire danger where there are some dried out grasses, but that's about it. And fortunately, so far, the early fire season, we've been spared. It was earlier looking like it might be an active one, but uh, thanks to this pattern we've been in, when you have cooler than normal temperatures and occasionally wet conditions, that really does much uh, to dampen down the uh, fire season. And looking at the satellite imagery on this Wednesday, starting in the morning, we've had the one low 
lifting northward and, and the, the surface low is back here that's going to be located in this region and then it'll continue just to uh, gradually weaken. So what you're seeing here in the curl, the, the comma shape here in the cloud patterns is more the mid and upper level low. And that's pointing more moisture moving into the panhandle tonight and for Thursday. And we've had that moisture cross northward up through the Alaska range. We've seen some rain in Anchorage today. Back to the west, a little quieter conditions. So there's a lot of low cloudiness and fog along areas of the west coast, not uncommon. Then we have the colder temperatures below freezing along the Arctic coast north slope. And you can see kind of some enhancement here to the clouds. There's gonna be a little boundary set up right along the uh, spine of the Brooks Range with that cloud growth. That's where the uh, band of accumulating wet snow is gonna set up here as we go through tonight and on Thursday and continuing into the day Friday. So weather map late tonight and into Thursday early morning we find weakening front, more of a trough pushing into the panhandle, a little breezy around it, and uh, areas of rain or rain showers, same thing. Uh, some of the higher elevations of the intercoastal mountains could have still snow like Thompson Pass, of course, get back up into the Chugach, but uh, as, as far as the Alaska Range too, there still could be a little bit of snow up there at the high elevations. And then this area here along the Brooks Range is where there's the, that uh, area of uh, accumulating snow developing. That continues during the day, Thursday, Thursday afternoon, this band of snow along the spine of the Brooks Range as you're crossing over the Dalton uh, Highway there at Attigan Pass. Here we have a weakening area of low pressure, kind of Prince William Sound, Northern Kenai in the general vicinity with this weakening trough push in through the inner channels of the Panhandle. Still some areas of mainly uh, light rain or rain showers. And then down here, here comes the, the weekend low. This low is gonna actually have a little stronger wind field around it. So by the time it gets up into the Gulf, it will have some gale force winds later Friday night and into Saturday, especially Saturday morning. So here's the low by Friday afternoon. We continue to have this unsettled pattern of just trough of low pressures extending from the southwest through the central eastern interior back across northwest Canada. So this will be the focus of some lower cloud cover, scattered showers and higher terrain could have uh, some snow showers. And then here comes that low and so by Saturday, it really deepens and winds up. You get a 992 low just uh, east of Kodiak Island in the Western Gulf and outside of uh, Kennedy entrance there. So this front will wrap itself with the curvature of the Gulf and push in toward the panhandle. And it's gonna have more rain and windier conditions. As I said, some gale force winds will be possible along uh, as that front approaches later Friday night and uh, especially first half of Saturday. There are warmer temperatures. Southern Panhandle could see some readings uh, maybe uh, around or breaking 60 degrees because there's pretty good push of warmer air coming up along uh, the British Columbia coast and up into at least the southern part of the Panhandle. And temperatures uh, coming up for Thursday morning, lows below freezing, again, Brooks Range, Arctic Coast, and then still a bit below freezing north side here of the Seward Peninsula, 28 there, Wales, 30 around Kotzebue. Uh, readings in through uh, south central, lower 40s, but still potential for some uh, areas of mainly lighter rain. And we have temperatures low mid 40s through the Panhandle. Highs on Thursday, uh, 40, uh, 50s across the Panhandle, only lower 50s. Uh, in through, say, Anchorage, up through Talkeetna, uh, Glen Allen. There are a few pockets where you're going to be stuck mainly in the 40s. And then up here along the middle, upper Yukon, you could squeak out a 60-degree reading, perhaps uh, Fort Yukon and Fairbanks and more likely toward uh, Eagle. And then temperatures only near, just below freezing there uh, along the Brooks Range where that snow will be falling. And as we come into Friday morning, a little colder there at uh, Anatovic Pass, down near 20 degrees for a low in the 20s along the Arctic coast and north slopes, some 20s here. Uh, actually, a little colder is gonna try to come in with the circulation around this broader low pressure here. So it might be a bit colder here as we get into Saturday morning, but uh, certainly lows over south central and into the panhandle, generally low mid 40s, uh, some upper 30s around 40 as we trail out along the Alaska Peninsula and into the eastern Aleutians. Friday afternoon, notice temperatures are not all that warm. Uh, it's certainly below the normal highs for this time of year. Uh, we're seeing readings maybe around 60 again there, Fort Yukon, Eagle, Northway on down toward uh, Fairbanks. 
and temperatures uh, may only struggle to get up to around the freezing mark there again at uh, Attigan and Anatovic passes uh, highs near freezing up there along the Arctic coast at least a little milder slightly there 47 at Nome a little little better weather there and then some some 50s at King Salmon and Dillingham and here's the extended temperature outlook for June 10th through the 14th so it's not quite to mid-month into next week of note, we still have below normal temperatures covering much of the mainland and extending into the panhandle. So not a whole lot of change coming up at least through the first half of next week. But as we push things beyond, centered on June 14th, so June 12th through the 18th, there's some hope maybe right around mid-month we'll start to see some ridging and a little drier pattern set up here over the Alaska Peninsula, southern mainland. Still could be a little below normal, near to a little below normal across the Yukon Valley in the time frame June 12th through the 18th. Precipitation wise, the 10th through the 14th, it does look like it may start to dry out after we get past this weekend system. May not be quite as wet along the Gulf Coast. Doesn't mean still won't be a few chances of some showers and things, but not like the weather systems we've had the past uh, month. And so that's promising there. And then up there to the north, maybe a little wetter uh, along the north slope down into uh, the Chuck GC coastline, Bering Strait. And as we go into June 12th through the 18th, maybe, as I said, just slightly drier than normal conditions across the southern mainland into the panhandle. This would be most welcome because it has been a rather gloomy stretch of weather with cooler than normal temperatures and occasionally wet weather, but uh, at least there's some hope here toward mid-month. Conditions will be improving, especially across the southern mainland and gradually spreading into the panhandle.